What's for? The very name suggests something traditional, something eccentric, and of course, something British. And it's impossible to talk about Morgan cars without a look back to the past. And in British terms, that means at least the end of the last war, the moment in time when this car was first conceived. So can it be today's Morgan is just a classic car that time forgot? Or is it a whole lot of fun for today's enthusiastic drivers? Well, why not join me, Roger Bailey, to find out. For most people, a car is a rational purchase. Buyers will look for practicality, technology and modern conveniences. Other buyers may want a new sports car, which means looking for a car with sharp handling, tenacious grip and a big turn of speed. It's just common sense, right? Well, oddly, there are some people who don't care one jot about common sense. For them, practicality, technology and speed are no more than the pointless desires of ordinary folk. These unusual people are the few who yearn for something audacious, something old school. And they want to laugh out loud, feel a connection with the world around them, feel traditional. So for them, a Volkswagen or a Porsche simply won't do. For these people, there's basically one choice. A Morgan. You will either fall for a Morgan the first time you see it, or you won't get it. And despite my being a Porsche fanboy, I must confess I'm beginning to get this car. I mean, just look at it. This is no old relic. It's a modern car. Okay, not a modern car, but a car built in modern times. Classic car ownership has never been more popular than it is now. A constant stream of events and an abundance of flourishing car owners clubs is testament to the fact. But not everybody wants to spend their weekends oiling trunnions or tuning carburettors, which is one of the significant reasons why Morgan cars have endured. There's no trunnions to look at, and instead we can admire this freshly fabricated stainless steel grille, the chrome fittings, the modern paint, and a host of delightfully made details. Twist the dainty little door handle to gain interest, clang the thin door shut, which makes a sound like a 1930s train door closing behind you, and be immersed in a bygone time. Twist the key for a rorty, gruff engine note, only to realise very quickly this is ticking over rather smoothly, just like a modern day Ford Duratec engine, which is no surprise as this is precisely what we have in 2 litre form. You begin to realise this is arguably the most ideal classic car you can own, one which looks ancient but features modern propulsion, meaning you never have to worry about overheating in traffic and you don't have to have the calf muscles of a shot putter to work the clutch and you can rest assured it will always spring to life every morning. And once out on the road the joy of driving begins. Unassisting steering is not too heavy and it's very direct, however I must say it's a little bit devoid of feel. That said, the overall feel of our Morgan more than compensates. It's a living, pulsating thing. Sounds and smells fill your senses. You drive it with your eyes wide open, learning to pilot the car from the low leather lined cockpit, peering over the dash and along the louvered bonnet in a way Spitfire pilots looked over their Merlin engines to view the forward trajectory. The flexible Ford engine is happy to rev, which is just as well as it doesn't wake up until there are 3,000 revs on the dial. As a result, you make good use of the Mazda MX-5 sourced 5-speed gearbox, which is by no means a hardship, as this is one of the nicest gear changes going. Morgan has stuck with leaf spring suspension at the back and sliding pillar suspension up at the front, so the handling isn't exactly sharp, grip isn't huge and the ride is firm thanks in part to the limited suspension travel, however the leather seats are really supportive and they do a great job of absorbing some of those bumps. 
There's obviously a complete lack of driver aid, of course. You'll find no anti-lock brakes, no airbags or traction control, and this lack of electronic safety aids is somehow rather liberating. It forces you to focus when you start upping the pace. So if the dynamics are a mixture of brilliance and antique, it's all the other stuff that makes the Plus 4 such a tempting prospect. This fabulous view along the handmade bonnet, the seating which places you right at the back, the hilariously empty view when looking over your shoulder when reversing, and the feel of being in a perambulator when the slightly fiddly roof is erected. In a world where the lifespan of some car models can be measured in months rather than years, it's faintly ridiculous that this Morgan has been produced since 1953. In 1955, the radiator cowl was redesigned. There's been various engines been fitted over the years, and there have been a few mechanical updates along the way. But the Morgan Plus 4 we have here is not that much different from its 1930s forebears. The basic construction hasn't changed. There's still a steel ladder chassis under a wooden framed body shell with the panels tacked into place. The fit, finish and quality of construction have improved considerably over the years, but you still need to view the Morgan in a very different light from any other car of today. What no doubt tempts in some owners though is the financial argument, because the Plus 4 seems to be practically immune from depreciation. Buy one and look after it, and when you come to sell it on, you could get most of your money back. So while the Plus 4 may not make sense from a rational point of view, this is a car for those who feel they're living in an irrational world. Those who rebel against the modern, regulated motoring landscape. Those who want to pilot an authentic sports car. And I say, long may this continue. That Morgan's Plus 4 was a marvel 70 years ago means their accomplishment shines through to this very day. The way it looks, the way it feels and the way it can enthrall an owner is appealing enough. That it also serves up a ton of on-road fun at less than hyperspeeds is what makes this car a uniquely compelling ownership proposition. So are you feeling the draw of a Morgan? Well why don't you let me know. In the meantime I think I'll take the long, winding way home, taking in the country air, and I might even see if I can find a drop of that local best bitter. So thank you again for watching. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and comments are always welcomed. I read every single one and I'll reply to most. And if you haven't already, please think about subscribing. And if you hit this little notification bell, I'll send you another video.